Hello, it's Tim from Australian Hiker and in today's video we're going to be talking about what to put in your day pack when hiking. Now the first comment that I would make here is when you first start out hiking you do not need to go out and buy anything special until you're convinced that this is something you really want to do. The whole idea of purchasing equipment for hiking is that most of the gear that you buy is made and manufactured to suit hiking and similar sorts of activities so it'll improve your experience but there's no requirement to go out and gear up uh, just to get out there and have a taste. So the first thing we can look at and the obvious thing is the backpack. In this case here this is my backpack it's an Osprey Talon 33 pack um, it's a smallish sort of pack as far as an overnight pack is concerned but as a day pack is concerned it's a larger size pack. This packs around about 33 litres in size but for majority of day hikes what you want to look at is a pack somewhere probably around about the 20 to 30 litre sizing and that will fit just about everything you're likely to need um, and we're talking about hikes here that aren't snow based that are what's called three season hikes uh, and that you're going to be going through uh, and hiking in warmer conditions maybe rain but no snow as such main thing with the packs is they need to be comfortable and you can use what you have around the house I think just about everybody will have spare backpacks sitting in their house somewhere uh, but again hiking backpacks have extra features and are built uh, to be used for hiking while we're still looking at the pack uh, the other thing we're going to be looking at is a water carrying and in this case here I prefer to have water bladders and I have a water bladder that sits in the pocket of this pack at the back um, in this case it's a Osprey 3 litre bladder um, in most cases I won't carry 3 litres of water unless it's a really hot day but again that, that choice is yours uh, and the difference in weight between a 1.5 litre bladder and a 3 litre bladder is not huge so this just gives you a bit of extra versatility For many people, um, bladders probably aren't as commonly used. Uh, pro uh, bladder users are probably in the uh, minority. Uh, people on the whole tend to prefer water bottles. This is a 750 litre this is a 750 ml water bottle uh, and usually water bottles for hiking will range uh, between 500 millimeters to a litre uh, and occasionally you do milliliters. now for a lot of hikers they prefer to use water bottles and this is probably more common than say bladders uh, and in this case here this is a 750 ml water bottle uh, but water bottles are available in size these days from half a litre to about 1.5 litres in size. Personal preference, uh, I tend to use water bottles on hikes that are short, uh, probably under about half an hour length uh, when it's not scorching hot and I know I'll only need a small amount of water for, for what I'm going to be doing. In addition, I'll tend to have another one of these in the car just in case I get back to the car and I'm thirsty and that's whether I'm carrying a bladder in the pack or a water bottle which will usually sit in the side of your pack just like this uh, and again as I said water bottles uh, are designed to go into hiking packs so that's probably your limitation on size. From here we'll start looking at the clothing. Now Clothing wise, as I said, you can pretty much use what you have at home, but if you do decide you are keen, getting some dedicated hiking equipment works really well. So I have here a pair of hiking pants and there are so many different brands on the market, the main criteria really tend to be comfort and fit. 
I'm a big fan of long pants with hiking. Uh, it protects you from getting sunburnt in the warmer months, keeps you warm in the colder months, and stops you getting scratched by uh, bush and sharp plants like spinifex if you happen to be hiking in the desert areas. Hiking pants often will tend to have varying pockets uh, on the back, on the sides, and you'll get a number of them that will have pockets with little flaps. Really the choice is yours. Uh, there are so many good brands around. Hiking tops. Again, I'm a big fan of long sleeve tops. Um, the only time I tend to wear short sleeve tops is if I'm hiking early in the morning or even at night time when I know I, I need, I don't need the sun protection. But long sleeve tops will actually protect you from getting dehydrated or, or losing moisture through your skin. And again, they provide that protection from sunburn. So choice again is yours, and I know from the hikes that I've done that I'm in the minority where you get most people wearing short sleeve tops. From here we'll start looking at footwear, and footwear really is the most important piece of equipment for hiking. If your footwear that you're using is not comfortable, and in this case here I'm using a pair of Olympus 3.5 uh, trail running shoes. These suit me really well. I've got a size 15 foot which is quite large uh, and it actually limits how much availability of footwear I can find. There's not a lot of variety of shoes for hiking that come that large. So if you're a size 10, 11, even a size 12 you're normally pretty good. Size 15 pretty difficult. These are a pretty well um, cushioned shoe and that's just my preference. I do like trail runners as opposed to boots uh, and again trail runners are starting to become more and more common on Australian hiking trails. They're very big in the US um, and starting to make headway uh, as, as well through Europe uh, also. Winter time, if I'm hiking in snow, then I'll shift over to a boot. But for me, this is a good option for hiking from day hikes all the way up to long distance hikes. As part of that, um, part of the footwear system, a decent pair of socks. The combination of footwear and socks shouldn't be so warm or so hot that your feet start to sweat. If you do, that's when you start getting moist feet and that's when blisters start developing. So it's a bit of a, a mix and match here. It's a bit of a trial and error. I don't tend to feel the cold that much at all on my feet, so I tend to wear a fairly thin sort of sock. It has a bit of cushioning underfoot, uh, but fairly light on top and fairly short on the length. Again, personal preference, but I do like wearing merino wool-based socks. I just find them to be a more comfortable feel on my foot. They tend to dry out uh, reasonably quick, and even when they do get wet, they tend to dry out reasonably quick, or not, not as quick as synthetic socks, but if they do get sopping wet because you've gone through a, a stream and they've, or you've been walking in heavy rain, they will keep you warm even when they are wet. These are actually an Australian made sock from Wilderness Wear um, and again it's the sort of thing I've been playing with socks for a couple of years, these are just my sock of choice at the moment. While we're still on clothing, uh, a buff uh, and basically the best thing, way to think of these is a bandana. Um, available in lots of different colours. This one here is pretty bright and leery. Personal choice here. Um, they can be used as a hat um, if you want to go through and give yourself a bit of extra warmth. Um, and they uh, uh, can be used in a number of different manner, manners. Try it again. Okay, <coughs> bandanas or buffs uh, have a number of different functions. They can be used as a hat alternative to provide protection. Uh, they give you a bit of extra warmth, particularly if it is cool. If you drag it down, it provides a bit of warmth on the neck and again can shade your neck from the sun. 
um, and it can also be used or in a number of different manners, particularly for females, where they'll use it to keep uh, the uh, hair out of their faces. Now, I've just scrunched this up on top of my head. I know my wife's staring at me at the moment. She hasn't normally folded nice and neatly. Uh, choice is really yours. Um, it really doesn't matter. The other thing that you can use buffs for, if it's particularly sandy or dusty, it can actually come over the face and provide a, uh, a bit of protection uh, for keeping the, the dirt and the dust out of your face in very, very dusty conditions. For me, really it tends to be worn around the neck or worn um, uh, on the head, particularly if I don't feel like wearing a, a hat. Uh, in wintertime in particular, that will often replace my hat altogether. From here, the hat is probably one of the most uh, necessary features. Australia has very harsh conditions, very hot sun. Uh, my hat of choice at the moment uh, is this Sunday afternoon hat, which has a long cape on the back of it, and this protects the back of the neck. Hang on a second. Stop. I oh, don't stop the video. Um, Okay. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at, still in the headwear, is a hat. And in this case here, peaked hat. Um, this is a Sunday afternoon sunrunner cap. Um, one of the reasons I like this is twofold. It has this nice little uh, break in the front of the peak, which means it can fold quite easily. And particularly in windy conditions, if you've got the, the wind at the side of you, one side will stay flat and this will push down, keeping it in place quite well. Also has this lovely cape at the back to protect you from the sun and has flaps that allow air to move uh, and the heat to escape out of here as well. So particularly when it's hot, it gives a bit of, a uh, bit of air to the top of your head. Now, I've got pretty much no hair. There's a very fine covering there, which you probably can't see. Um, and if I go hiking without a hat or a head cover of some sort, I get a really badly burned scalp. Uh, and for those of you that don't have much hair, you know how painful that can be. So it's rare that I'll ever have, I go hiking without some sort of hat or headwear on. So you can see the cape comes down quite low, protects me at the side of the face, protects me at the back, and it will also clip uh, together at the front. Uh, so in really windy conditions, it's holding it in place, not flapping around all over the place. One comment that I'd made here, one comment that I'd make here is that um, you can see on this, this hat there's a small little clip, a uh, little bulldog clip. Uh, this lives on the top of all my hats and I tend to use this if it is raining, I'll actually clip the front of the peak of the rain hat, the rain hood at the front because what can happen if you just wear your rain hat and stops here the water hits the peak and gets absorbed up through the material and can end up running onto your neck uh, as well through there so this provides a bit of extra protection uh, from the rain and it keeps you a bit drier I'll talk about some alternative options or some, some swap outs in a moment um, but the next thing we'll go through and look at moving away from clothing is a compass. For most of the hikes that I do, they're on very obviously marked trails. Okay. I'll use you as a guide on this because you, you, I can hear it, but it probably sounds, if you can hear it, it's, it's noticeable. Okay. 
Okay, moving away from clothing, starting to look at some of the uh, miscellaneous gear. One thing I'll carry with me on all hikes is a basic compass. Don't have to spend a lot of money on this, um, and in most cases you don't have to have a huge... Uh, in most cases you don't have to have a huge knowledge on using compasses. Even if you just know how to find north, uh, to know which direction you've been travelling, so if you do happen to move off trail and get lost and need to know which direction you need to head back towards the car park or back towards the trail, having a compass is quite handy. It is rare that I'll use compasses these days. Most of the walks that I do are on marked trails, but every so often it's just handy to have as a just-in-case. From there, uh, things like sunglasses. We're out in the open, uh, particularly in very sunny sort of areas. You can see by my face, very wrinkly. Now, this is a lifetime spent outdoors uh, in the sun. Uh, and I probably should have been wearing sunglasses more often when I was younger. Uh, but having a, a pair of sunglasses that is comfortable, that doesn't leave large gaps around the face when you put it on, um, and doesn't sort of dig into the head. And really for you, have a look at what is comfortable, what, make, what suits. These ones are actually a glass lens um, and they look pretty cool as well. So it's part of the thing when you're looking at sunglasses, but it's, it's a personal choice there. While we're still talking about glasses, I do need a pair of glasses to see when I'm reading. Um, so I carry a small com compact set of reading glasses. I don't tend to use my expensive glasses that I have at home or at work because they come in a fairly large case. Um, I'm lucky that I can do that, but that's not always the case. But having a basic set of glasses that may not have all the, the filters and the, the, the shiny edges on them, just in a basic set of frames, is worthwhile carrying with you if you need them. In this case here, these glasses are about $10 to $20 and they work quite well for me. Knife. I'll always tend to carry a knife when I'm hiking. This is a fairly light, this is a fairly lightweight hiking knife. Um, and it's designed, from my perspective, more to think uh, if I'm carrying things like cheese, I want to cut cheese or food up, I might need to uh, trim up or do a bit of repairs on equipment. Uh, but for me, the main use really is uh, using it for food, and I can spread food and cut food with it. So while we're talking on food, most of the time, if I'm going on a hike that's around lunchtime, I'll carry a lightweight spoon. Um, again, there are so many different spoons on the market. Nothing wrong with bringing a spoon from home, but a nice long handle spoon means you can dig into a peanut butter jar or dig into a bag of food. Uh, and the long handles means you're keeping your hands away from the food itself. One of the most important things I'd look at is toilet paper. Now, depending on where you are going on a hike, having some sort of toilet paper with you uh, is probably worthwhile thinking about. Um, you may be going in an area where you're only 10 minutes away from the car park, you know there's a toilet there. In that case, I probably wouldn't worry about it. But if you're going out for a day, um, assume you're going to need to go to the toilet, even if you, you don't uh, actually do it, so it's worthwhile having it handy. I know how much toilet paper I'll use in a day, and for me, providing I'm fit and healthy, that's 10 sheets. Um, and again, that's something I've worked at over a period of time. Having extra is not going to uh, cause too much weight addition, uh, but really you have to think about that and always carry it with you. While we're discussing toilet paper, if you do need to use it and you are uh, needing to bury waste, like toilet paper or human waste, having something to dig with is quite handy as well. This is a lightweight hiking trowel, uh, weighs very little, it clips on the back of my pack and it'll, it'll tuck into the back pocket uh, of my pack itself. Um, and it's worthwhile, as I said, you don't want to leave human waste exposed, so you may need to find you kind of have to dig a hole uh, to go to the toilet and then bury your waste. 
Now, trowels really should never touch human waste. You're digging the hole itself, you do your business, you backfill the hole again, uh, tamp it down with your foot, uh, but uh, so otherwise this, this trowel really only touches soil. From there, if you have a phone, which most people do, do these days, carry it with you. Uh, now, be warned that mobile phones don't always work in the areas you're likely to be hiking in. If you're hiking in areas close to the city, um, there's a good chance you will have a signal, but don't assume that you will have a signal uh, just because you have a phone with you. Uh, it's handy to have. It means if you do have a signal, it's quite useful. Uh, for me, who does a lot of blogging, it's quite handy. Uh, and in this case, I've also got a battery pack case, which doubles the length of the life. But that's more from a blogging perspective rather than a necessary hiking perspective. I would suggest, though, if you don't have a case on your phone and you are going out bush, put something with a rubberized edge on it, which means if you drop it, you're not going to break the phone. You are out in the open. The next thing to look at is first aid gear. I will always carry a first aid pack with me of some sort. What I carry will tend to vary, but it typically, it doesn't weigh that much at all. So I'll typically I just grab it out of my hiking gear and bring it with me. This has things like tweezers for pulling out splinters. Uh, it has a splinter pick as well. Uh, it has compression bandages. It has triangular bandages. It's gonna do me pretty much all that I need to do it on a one day hike, all the way up to a hike that lasts multiple weeks. Um, I rarely ever have to do anything with serious injuries on hikes. In fact, I never have, either for myself or other people. But there's a chance that perhaps someone might fall and break their arm, a rare chance that someone might get bitten by a snake. Um, splinters, probably a reasonably common sort of thing. So it's worthwhile having just in case. Bandages, some sort of painkillers uh, like ibuprofen or um, para paracetamol. Um, for hiking, I tend to use ibuprofen uh, because that deals with inflammation, which is more common when you're doing longer distance hiking or longer hikes. So nice, small, lightweight bag, pretty easy to find in my pack. I know what it looks like. Now we're going to look at things that don't necessarily come on every hike, but will do depending on what I'm going through and doing. So the first one we're going to look at is, this is a Garmin inReach. This is a GPS, as well as being a two-way satellite communication device. I've only ever had one instance where this hasn't worked, and that's been because I've been in a very heavy rainstorm in the bottom of a, uh, a steep valley surrounded by tall trees. But in, you know, in thousands of kilometres of hiking, that's been the only time it hasn't worked. I can actually communicate with my wife and send her a text message to say I'm all okay or I've stopped hiking for a day. Uh, tends to be more useful on multiple day hikes. But I have done day hikes where I've been well and truly out of phone range and this is the only forms of communication we've had. This is not a cheap option. It also comes with a monthly subscription fee. So for most people, it's probably not something you're gonna race out and buy. But if you are hiking, and even day hiking in areas where it's remote, uh, away from phone signal, um, and I've done day hikes where I've been 20 kilometers from the nearest person. So in that instance there, yes, it's expensive, but having that peace of mind is, is something well worth having. In addition, this is also a personal locator beacon. If I injure myself or I need uh, to be rescued by emergency services, there is an SOS button under here which I can press uh, to say, basically, I need help, come and get me. This, as I said, is not a cheap option. If you don't want to go to this extent, you can buy personal locator beacons, which are much cheaper in most cases and if you're getting serious into hiking it's worthwhile considering but I'd only be starting to look at this where you're starting to go in very remote areas uh, or doing something a bit more extreme. Lip balm 
Again, not something I carry on every hike, but if it's going to be during hot weather or very windy weather, I'll carry it with me. Weighs very little, keeps the lips from cracking. Going back onto the clothing again, another buff. In this case here, this is a merino wool buff. So particularly during the winter time when I know it is cold, I'll swap over to this one or I'll carry it as a second buff. Um, again, the weight's fairly light on these uh, and these ones also actually go over my, uh, uh, my uh, clothing pack, which forms my pillow at night time to give it a, a material feel. Gloves. And for me, I tend to only wear lightweight gloves when I'm hiking, either in cold, even in cold weather. For me, I only tend to use lightweight hiking gloves, even when I'm hiking in cold weather. But it depends on you as an individual. If you feel the cold in your hands, you might want a heavier weight pair of gloves. Um, and if I'm hiking in snow, I'll carry something a bit different as well. Something I didn't mention before when I looked about footwear is these are a lightweight pair of hiking gaiters. Uh, they're lycra. They're purely designed to keep sand and sticks out of your, sh your footwear. So I won't always wear these, but if I know I'm going into an area where there's a lot of sand and loose dirt, I'll tend to wear these. If I'm going into an area where I know snakes are an issue, and there are a couple of walks that I'll do each year, or a couple of areas that I go into each year where I know there will be a lot of snakes and I'm walking through long grass, I'll wear a longer pair of gaiters that will provide protection from snake bite. Also, if I'm going to the Northern Territory where there's a lot of spin effects, uh, which will actually pierce through clothing, a heavier pair of gaiters are worthwhile having as well. If it happens to be looking like it's raining or it's extremely cold, I'll start. If it looks like the weather's going to be cold, I'll also carry a second layer of thermal insulation. In this case, this will go over the top of the top that I've got at the moment. And if it's really going to be cold or it looks like it's raining, I'll carry wet weather gear. So I'll have a rain jacket, which is folded up, and also a pair of rain pants as well. Quite often the rain pants, a lot of hikers won't wear them, but if I'm going to be away hiking for a longer period or I know it's going to be heavy rain, having dry legs, particularly when during cold weather, the rain pants are well worth it as well. Water filter. Now, unless I'm going on a really long hike, long day hike, say of 20, 30, 40 kilometres in a single day. I typically don't tend to carry this, but if it's very hot weather or I know I'm going to be drinking a lot of water, my bladder is three litres, um, but sometimes I've had hikes where I've consumed up to five or six litres a day. I will actually take a water filter with me, uh, and this is just a small 600 litre, uh, milliliter water filter. Um, you go through and fill it up, that's the filter unit. Um, let the filter water in the filter unit moisten it up and then you can either drink directly from here or top up your water bladder as well. Um, so it's handy to have when, you, when you're getting into the, the longer, more serious day hikes. Other couple of things to look at are a pack cover. Now this pack doesn't come with its own built-in pack cover, many do, uh, but if I know it's going to be raining, I often have electronics with me, so I'll have a pack cover just to provide protection from that. Because while packs are typically made of material that's reasonably waterproof, if it gets heavy enough, it will actually start absorbing through the pack itself. So this goes over the top of the pack uh, just to provide a bit of protection. A couple of other things to look at. Uh, this is a head net, particularly when it's a lot of flies or mosquitoes. Uh, it goes over the top of your hat and protects you from the bugs on your face. Uh, I don't always carry this with me, but certain times of the year I will. This is a waterproof insulating jacket. 
Um, even if it gets sopping wet, it'll keep me warm. Some people prefer down jackets. Uh, the disadvantage with down, if it's heavy rain and you get it sopping wet, it tends to lose a lot of its insulating properties, but purely personal preference. There are a number of down jackets on the market these days that actually have in waterproofing uh, material on them, uh, but it's a matter of choosing something that will keep you warm, warm in the rain. And again, this is packed up, ready to go into the pack itself. This is about to stop. Okay, hat 